Luke chapter 19, beginning in verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Because this man, too, is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. You know, in this passage, we see that salvation is a time-sensitive matter. I mean, look at the phrases that refer to time. Jesus says, come down when? Immediately. I must stay at your house today. He came down at once. He said, here and now. And then Jesus says, today salvation has come. You know, that's the title of our message today. Today salvation has come. When it comes to salvation, time is of the essence. Yeah. There is an urgency with salvation. And I love this story. It's a great story because Zacchaeus hears that Jesus is coming to town and he decides not to delay. It's like an alarm went off in his head and said, okay, Jesus is here. I heard about this guy. I got to go. And he just goes. And he had to be near Jesus. Then as soon as he gets there, Jesus gets there, he says, come down immediately. And he came down. It was time. It's time. You know, salvation has a time. It's kind of like this. <laughs> Stand up and get out your towel. And you're just so excited. You know it's time. I gotta go to the game yesterday. It was awesome. That was another game. That wasn't my video. We didn't have that many people at the cupcake game yesterday. So uh, that was an Alabama game. But the idea, it's time. It's time. I want to tell you today, it's time to seek Jesus. It's time. The story of Zacchaeus screams loud and clear, it's time. For many, there is no urgency in following Jesus. Jesus calls you and says, come immediately, and you stay up in the tree. Jesus calls you to seek further, and you stubbornly say, you know, I'll stay in the tree. I climb the tree to see you, Jesus, I'm good up here. I'll enjoy the view a little while longer. And Jesus, he didn't negotiate with them. He didn't say, oh, thank you so much for climbing a tree, short guy. Way to go. <laughs> you climbed a tree to see me. I'm so thankful. When it's convenient for you to talk, I'd like to spend some time with you. How, how does next week look for you? Next month? He doesn't 
say that at all. He says, get out of the tree right now. Come down immediately. I'm coming to your house today. There is an urgency with salvation. He's urgent for salvation to come to this man's house. And in Hosea chapter 10, the prophet has a persuasive message. And he says, sow righteousness for yourselves. Reap the fruit of unfailing love and break up your unplowed ground. For it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers righteousness on you. It is time to seek the Lord. It's time. It's time. For most, seeking the Lord falls further and further down the list of priorities. Most don't ever look at their watch or their phone and go, oh, it's time to seek Jesus. They, they don't think that way. They're thinking, man, when do I get off of work? How long is this preacher going to go? You know, I mean, think different things like that. But you think it's time. It's time to seek Jesus. You know, it's, what time is it right now? It's 11.02 on September of the 11th. It's time. It's time right now. Amen. You know, what are you waiting for? He said, come down immediately. Let's obey immediately, amen? Right. Let's get out of the tree and stop making excuses. Amen. If you want to come, to Jesus to come to your house, you've got to obey. If you want salvation to come to you, salvation demands an urgent response. Amen? Right. Let's look at this guy, Zacchaeus, a little bit. Okay. Zacchaeus is another unlikely recipient of the Lord's attention. <clears throat> Just like many others that Jesus talks with, Zacchaeus was a social outcast. And what's more, he was hated by many. Zacchaeus was a Hebrew. In fact, his name in Hebrew is a term for meaning pure or clean. But he was not considered clean or pure. In fact, he was an opportunistic guy who betrayed his own people by collecting taxes for the Roman occupying forces in Jericho. His job was to collect money from all the local citizens, merchants who traveled through. And collecting taxes, like I said, implied first that he worked for the hated Roman government. And second, that the Romans allowed for him to collect a surcharge for his own use. And he was a chief tax collector at that, which means he collected taxes from other tax collectors. They all gave it to him, and so he's going to surcharge on a surcharge. You know, he was very wealthy. Probably had one of the most expensive houses in Jericho. He would have been shunned by people. Maybe that's why he was away from the crowd. Maybe that's why, not only because he was short, but because he didn't want to associate with religious people who were seeing Jesus. He was kicked out of the synagogue. This is not somebody you would have thought would be one of the most unique examples of seeking Jesus. Wow. I mean, when you think about seeking Jesus, who do you, if you're going to teach somebody about seeking Jesus, oh, let's look at Zacchaeus. He's become one of the most examples, but he's an unlikely candidate. And some here today are thinking, wait, dude, wait, preacher man, hang on. I'm too messed up to be, to go to Jesus. I'm not good enough to seek Jesus. Well, neither was Zacchaeus. He was a national traitor that people hated. You don't have to be good to seek Jesus. Good people don't go to heaven. Saved people go to heaven. So if you're sitting here today and think, well, I've got some skeletons in my closet, man. I, you know, there's two, I'm too messed up. Well, everybody else does. Look around. We're a lovely group of sinners. <laughs> you look wonderful, but you're a sinner and I'm a sinner and we're all sinners. No one is good enough to come to Jesus. Let the story of Zacchaeus remind us that Jesus came to find the sinner and not the perfect. He was looking for the lost. He was looking for the lost. He's looking for you. You know, Zacchaeus is a great example of radical change when we talk to Jesus. This is a crucial conversation because he just changed. It was so simple, so right and and I love his first phrase there. He says, here and now. Here and now. Just the presence of Jesus in his town and changed his behavior. He didn't go to collect taxes from Jesus and Jesus' entourage. He climbed a tree to see him. Just the presence of Jesus, he made a huge decision. He 
came down from the tree and started to walk home with Jesus. But as they were walking home, a crowd started muttering about Jesus being in the presence of a sinner. Imagine walking in OZ's shoes that day. Imagine walking there and you're there and all of a sudden you're with Jesus and people are hating on Jesus because of you. How would you feel? How would you feel if this was your moment with Jesus? You climbed the tree. What would you say? What would you do? The reality is when we have a conversation with Jesus, something else meets Jesus. Our past. Our past meets Jesus, right? I mean, when Jesus would talk to people or in, in conversation with people, he said, why do you entertain evil thoughts in your heart? I mean, Jesus knows what's going on, right? That'd be kind of intimidating. Sometimes I think my wife's got that type of intuition and I try to have a good heart, but she knows, you know. Yeah. My mother-in-law the same way. I can't be bad around them. They know. Yeah. Why'd you think that? I, I don't know. What it, how do you know? <laughs> you need to be intense to be with Jesus because when you talk with Jesus, when you come face to face with him, you realize who you are. Yeah. Right. In many ways, when you read the scriptures, it's just like a mirror and you see yourself. And Zacchaeus, he was reminded of who he was. Sinner, they muddied. This was a dirty sinner, that tax collector, that traitor, as he's just walking by. So when you have a conversation with Jesus, your Jesus, Jesus and your past are going to meet. Amen. So what do you do? What do you do when Jesus and your past meet? Do you, do you front and make excuses? Do you lie and cover up? Jesus, Zacchaeus could have made excuses and said, oh, Jesus, why? You know, you could have looked at Jesus and said, oh, all these people are exaggerating. Everything I do is legal. I actually became a tax collector to protect them. Yeah. I, I'm better than that. They don't really want the Romans to collect from them. I'm Zacchaeus. I'm pure. You know, I'm a good guy. You know, I actually saved them money. You know, he could have been defensive and made excuses. Or he could have got angry. Zacchaeus could have been angry with the crowd and yelled at them, even threatened them. You just wait till I come over next week. You thought I, I extorted money then? Oh, you just wait. And he could have threatened them. He could have yelled at them. You're going to really pay for embarrassing me in front of Jesus. He could have got angry. And that's sometimes our response when our sin is brought out before us. Or he could have felt ashamed backed away and I think this is what a lot of people did Zacchaeus could have heard all the muttering and said to Jesus in tears I, I'm sorry man. I made you look bad I, I, I'm, I, I, I'll, I'll go away go, go talk to them I, I'm too sinful I'm too messed up you know my sin is too bad I'm making you look bad now and you're the son of God you know you know, this was an uncomfortable moment. Every re relationship with Jesus has uncomfortable moments. If you think you're following Jesus and you have uncomfortable moments, I call you to rethink that. Because your past is going to meet Jesus. Your sin is going to meet Jesus. And everyone who really connects with Jesus is quickly reminded of their sinful past. What do you do? <clears throat> What do you do at this uncomfortable point in the conversation? Do you front and lie? Do you make excuses and justify your sinful behavior? Or do you simply change? Do you get embarrassed and angry? Or do you change? Do you get sad, discouraged, and pull away from Jesus? Or do you change? Often we, we neglect to see the real answer is just to change. It's not complicated. Right. It doesn't have to be emotional. But what do you do when you talk with Jesus and you're reminded of your sin? I love Zacchaeus because he owned his sin. Right. He took the opportunity and he changed. Again, this was a crucial conversation. He had a moment and it was different. He took the opportunity. You know, this guy right here in the picture holding up Tom Landry, his name is Dion Rich. And he's known as the father of gate crashing. Rich successfully entered Super Bowl 35 times without pain. 
and he made it onto the field 22 times. <laughs> he donned on wigs, glasses, fake mustaches, beards. He'd collect old press passes from previous Super Bowls. He'd flash them to the guards. He wore jackets the same color as the event security, put on an earpiece in. And this one in particular, the Super Bowl here in, in Louisiana, the Cowboys beat the Denver Broncos. He actually rode on the Denver Broncos bus to the, with the team and stayed on the side of the field the whole game. And eventually Rich made his way to the Dallas Cowboys sideline as the second half uh, uh, ended. And as seconds ticked off, he moved closer and closer, you know, as the Cowboys victory. And they, he inched closer and closer to Tom Landry. The final seconds counted down. Rich ran over in the middle of the crowd and everybody's going crazy. And he grabbed Landry's leg. And he's there, and, he, and they took this picture. <laughs> it was in all the newspapers the next day. <laughs> Opportunistic, right? <laughs> Pretty awesome. Now, I'm not saying we should be deceitful and lying. And saying, hey, that's that's kind of cool, I'm just saying. You know? I don't know if that's how I'm going to get in the tunnel one day, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying we should be deceitful, but we need to take an opportunity to do something great. This guy was a famous opportunist. Opportunist. You know, he took the opportunity to sneak into the Super Bowl. Will you take the opportunity to repent? Yeah. Will you take the opportunity to repent? Like I said earlier, Zacchaeus was an opportunist because he he, he robbed his own people and he, and he really, he saw an opportunity for money, he went after it. But now, he sees another opportunity. And that was the opportunity to repent. And repentance demands a certain level of opportunism. Where you just get after it. You just go. Take the opportunities that are here and repent. Amen? What did he say? Here and now. Here and now. You know, Zacchaeus could have defended himself to Jesus and to the crowd that day. And this is what I think many people do. Jesus calls us to go further. And what do we do? We defend ourselves about past good things we have done. To make up for the bad things we need to change. And he could have pointed to the, to the crowd. He says, hey, hey, I climbed a tree to see Jesus. What did you do? I didn't see anybody else there on the limb with me. And you could point to your past good instead of missing the, and miss the opportunity to change. You know, some here are content with their current level of goodness. They're content with their current level of righteousness. They're content with their current level of seeking. And when presented with an opportunity to change, and you go, you, the Bible calls you to change certain things, and you hear things, and I've got to change, I've got to read more, and you point back to a religious experience. I raised my hand at a concert. I did this, I did that. Instead of just changing. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate Zacchaeus, he just changed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Jesus didn't walk up to him. And pat OZ on the back and say, bless your heart. You climbed a tree to see me. Don't worry about those mean people. You had, you tried. Way to go. When Zacchaeus said, I'm going to give up my money, he didn't interrupt him and say, oh, no, no, hang on to your money. Don't give any of it away. He didn't say, oh, you cheated people. Well, he hasn't done anything wrong. He doesn't. Because there's not one person in the gospel who spoke to Jesus and didn't have to change. Yeah. And when you and I come to Jesus and have a conversation with him, we're going to have to change. No matter how many times you read the word, you must repent. You must change. And Zacchaeus, he took his opportunity and he changed. Will you? No, Jesus, he didn't tell him to hang on to his money. No, he responded to his repentant decision. And he says, today has some, uh, salvation has come to this house. Because today was the day that Zacchaeus repented. Jesus didn't talk about it changing. Because he knows, Jesus knows that everyone who comes to him has to change. And so what does he say? Here and now, I give half of my possessions. Zacchaeus, he gave up something for Jesus. Half of his possessions to the poor. What will you give up for Jesus? Everyone.
everyone who comes to Jesus has to give up something. Some will give up relationships. Some will give up their jobs. All will give up comfort because you can't follow Jesus and be comfortable. Right. You can't. You're not doing it. Like the coach used to say, if you can't feel it, you're not doing enough weight. Put some more weight on there, son. Yeah. You can't feel it. You're not denying yourself. Right. And all will have to give up comfort. I mean, think about that for a minute. He gave half of his possessions. How uncomfortable would that be? We amass possessions and wealth and stuff and stuff. And when we get the stuff gets old, we get new stuff. Then you have the old stuff and the new stuff, and you're a hoarder, you know. I mean, you guys. <laughs> but imagine the stuff you want, and you gave up half of it. How uncomfortable would that day be? And I think one of the biggest dangers that we face in following Jesus is that we like to be comfortable. We don't want to be uncomfortable. And yes, mercy is an awesome lesson. Thank you, Steve. And, and but repentance is a great lesson as well. Yeah. And sometimes we don't like to hear things that tell us where people tell us to change. Yeah. We, don't, we don't like grades because it shows us that we need to change our study yeah. habits. Uh, <laughs> you know, we don't like reviews and performance evaluations at work. We don't like them because they tell us you got to change. And people don't like to change. But Zacchaeus, he did. He got uncomfortable. Will you get uncomfortable? What will you give up? What will you give up? His wealth was in his way, so he had to give it up. Everyone who comes to Jesus has to give up something. What do you need to give up for Jesus? He adds to this. He says, and if I've cheated anyone, I will pay him back four times the amount. Everyone also who comes to Jesus has to make amends and reconcile with the people that they've hurt. Everyone has broken relationships. Everyone has hurt feelings. Everyone has to forgive. And if you don't, well, amen. But I think everybody I've ever met has some level of hatred in their heart, have some level of resentment, bad feelings, hurt feelings. And we have these things, and we have to make amends. Zacchaeus said he's going to go back to the people who he achieved and pay them back. Now, talk about an uncomfortable conversation. That would be uncomfortable to go back and to say, I cheated you and I stole your money. Mm -hmm. And then they have to hear what they would say in response. Righteous or unrighteous, you would have to hear it. Wow. Yeah. That would be really hard. Mm -hmm. And to, to go through with that would be very difficult. And the truth is, when we go back and make amends, there are tough conversations. Yeah. When you go back and you confess and you shine light on something and shed, hey, this is actually what happened. And I, I stole from you or I, I cheated on you. I, I hurt you. I did something I said I wouldn't do. I, those are hard conversations. And when you come to Jesus, you got to make amends with other people. Because how can you love God if you can't love your brother right next to you? You know, so who do you need to make amends with? Who do you need to apologize to? Or maybe who do you need to forgive? Who do you need to forgive? You can't follow Jesus without forgiveness. There's no theological way around it. You have to forgive to follow Jesus. He says it. You want to go to heaven? You've got to forgive. You've got to forgive. And following Jesus, you've got to make amends with other people. And today I want to call you to be like Zacchaeus. Amen. And have a response like his that says, here and now, Lord, I'll give up this. I'll give it up, whatever it is. I want you to think in your notes or write it down, whatever. I'll give up this for Jesus. And have that moment where you decide, I'm going to give this up. Or, and or, however you want to put it, I got to go make this right. I hurt that person really bad. I wronged them. I've got to go make amends. I will go and apologize. Let's match the Lord's urgency with urgent repentance. Amen? You know, salvation has come. Salvation has come. You know, looking at Jesus' words, we looked at Zacchaeus here a little bit. 
and his words, but Jesus' words are amazing, aren't they, in this conversation? I would love to hear him say this to me. Today, salvation has come. For this man, too, is a son of Abraham. You know, Jesus, he saves our souls and he restores our identity. He helps Zacchaeus and, and, and the crowd see that when, he, when you come to Jesus, you don't have to be defined by your sin anymore. Jesus helps him to see that he's worth more than his past. Amen. And today, as you repent, I want you to hear Jesus' words. Salvation has come to you. You don't have to be defined by your sin anymore. You are more than your past. You're greater than your failings. In fact, he says you're a son of Abraham or a daughter of Abraham. What does that mean? It means he's restoring his covenant. Abraham was the one that God had a covenant with. It's about, it's a relational conversation. To be the son of Abraham means that you're in a covenant with God. You're defined by your relationship with God, not your failings. Yeah. We've got to remember that. That's what Jesus did. He not only saves our souls, but he restores our identity. He gives us back dignity. Because we've done some really undignifiable things in our lives. And we feel shame and we feel insecure. And does God really love me? And how can I get past that? But he says, no, this man. The cheating tax collector who collected taxes from other tax collectors, the chief tax collector, is a son of Abraham. And no matter what you've done, Jesus can save your soul and he can restore your identity, your true identity, in relationship with him. Amen? Amen. It says you're a son. You're a son. You're a daughter. That's someone that's cherished and special to God. You know, and, it's, and in this conversation... Jesus clearly defines his purpose in verse 10. It says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. I'm so excited. Last night, uh, I'm excited to announce that Dahlia Lozano was baptized. Amen. She made the decision to make Jesus Lord and was baptized last night. All of her sins were forgiven and she was added to the family. Amen. Welcome to the family, sister. You know, I, I love, she shared last night at the baptism. It was moving to be there and to hear. And, and just to see that what this is what Jesus does. He looks for the lost. He came to find the lost. You know, he's going through the streets of College Station. He's looking. He's looking through every dorm on campus, through every building on campus. He's looking for every neighborhood, through every house. He's looking to seek and to save what is lost. Jesus, he went through Jericho to find Zacchaeus. You know, he came to not find the perfect, but the lost. Amen. It's not necessarily the religious even. He was just looking for somebody who would obey and, and listen to him. Yeah. And I think we got to hear that today. Zacchaeus wasn't perfect. You and I aren't perfect. Hey, man, Jesus came to find you. You are the perfect candidate for him to find. Because that's what he looks for. He's looking for the lost. He's looking for you. Jesus is seeking for you. He wants to have a relationship with you. And when he finds you, and he finds you when? When you decide to repent, just like Zacchaeus did. I'm so thankful Jesus found Dahlia. Yeah. Amen. And my prayer is that he'll find you. Yeah. In conclusion, Zacchaeus is a great example for all who would seek after Jesus. Yeah. You have to do whatever you have to do. If you're short, climb a tree. <laughs> whatever you got to do to see Jesus, do it. If that means losing sleep, lose sleep. Yeah. Get up earlier. Go to bed earlier and spend some time with Jesus in the morning. Amen. Don't let obstacles stop you. When you read your Bible and spend time with Jesus, you are going to be confronted with your past and with your sin. I want to encourage you, don't defend. Don't deflect. Don't make excuses. Don't get angry. Don't become Eeyore and oh, I'm so bad. No, just change. Just change. He came to save you from that. Yeah. Don't let obstacles stop you. Own it. Make decisions, not excuses. Yeah. 
And when you converse with him, you're going to have to change. You're going to have to give something up. That relationship, that person you don't like, that person you hate, you're going to have to forgive. Yeah. You're going to have to go make it right. Let's have crucial conversations just like Zacchaeus did. And truly, today, uh, salvation can come to our house. Amen. Amen. Amen.